go ahead and look at the resolution limits imposed by diffraction. So let's say that we have a bunch of rays coming in perfectly parallel to an aperture whose diameter, as we learned before, is given by D. Um, what the Heisenberg uncertainty principle tells us is that these rays, which are traveling perfectly straight, are going to come up with an angular component after this aperture. Any, any sort of light source that's limited in diameter doesn't let light rays through perfectly straight or transmit light rays perfectly in one direction. There's always a spread of angles. And the spread of angles, and notice we're giving a full spread of angles here, a half spread of angles, delta theta one half is defined by that angle right there. But this formula right here gives us the spread of angles. And it's 1.22 times the wavelength of the light in nanometers divided by the size aperture or the aperture D. And of course, we're going to use MKS units for all of this. And delta theta is going to be in radians. So for reasonable aperture sizes on the order of a couple centimeters, you get delta thetas on the order of, of milliradians, um, which is very, very small. Uh, another, another way to express this is if you have an imaging system um, where the image is formed near the focal length of the lens. So here we have, I have two objects, a red object and a green object, far away from a lens, and the image is going to be formed somewhere near the focal length. Then a fairly good approximation um, for the size of the spot that's formed, and let's zoom in on this. Uh, I'll zoom in here and we have sort of a, a fairly good spot here. The size of the spot that's formed that we're going to call delta L over here is given by this equation, 1.22 times the focal length of the lens times the wavelength divided by the aperture size D, where in this case the aperture size D is simply given by the size of the lens. And so there's always some limitation to how small an optical system will focus rays. And you can plug some numbers in here and do the calculations fairly easily, and you'll find that, that these sizes are pretty small. Um, looking at this, this optical system here that has a red ray and a green ray, um, or excuse me, a, a set of red rays, a set of green rays coming from two point sources, if you look over here at the image plane at what this looks like, if these two spots are very close together, um, you'll see that it's not possible to resolve the light from each of them. They'll look sort of like a big, broad peak. However, if you start to separate these two things and they move outwards a little bit, uh, you'll come to a point at the image plane over here um, when delta L is a critical value that they become just resolved. And you can actually see a dip and see that, in fact, the light is from two sort sources, and then as they separate more and more, they become fully resolved. And another way to measure delta L is the spacing out here um, far away or on the image plane where these things become just resolved. Um, so delta L gives you essentially the resolution on the image plane. Um, one thing to notice is that we're still considering perfect imaging systems here, and that the larger an aperture gets, the larger D gets, uh, the more and more aberrations become important. And so aberrations are going to limit the size of the aperture in any real imaging system. So to conclude, we talk about the first way that we can actually calculate the performance of an imaging system. And this is through something called point spread function. The point spread function is just the calculated image of an optical system to a perfect point source of light. And Optics Lab and other programs will do this. It's beyond the scope of the class to do this mathematically for an imaging system by going through the analytic expressions because there's a lot of stuff we haven't covered that's needed to do this. But most, most ray tracing programs will give you a point spread function. And it's commonly found in description of optical systems, but it can't be measured except in systems that measure images that are very far away, i.e. telescopes, uh, where you measure a star. So it's next to impossible to make a truly point source of light in the laboratory. Um, so while it's a very good idea and can be calculated, it doesn't really give you a practical measure that you can, can use in the laboratory to measure systems. But let's take a look at the images down here of the point spread function measured for two imaging systems. One is an unaberrated system, so where the aberrations are set to zero or we have very small apertures so that they're, they're, they're negligible. And in this case, the point spread function looks like a curve like this. It looks kind of like a Gaussian curve. And if we look at what the image would look like, 
in an unaverated system, this is what a point spread function would look like. You see a, a sort of round dot of finite size. This diameter is approximately delta L, as we defined back on the, the previous page using this formula right here, where D is the diameter of the imaging system. And that's the best your optical system is ever going to do for a given D and wavelength and F is the smallest this spot can get is delta L given by the limits of physics. However, if we go ahead and, and do a point spread function calculation for an aberrated system, one that has, uh, say, spherical aberration, the point spread function now broadens out and looks like this. And we can essentially measure at the halfway point the size of this and the size of this and determine that, gee, this system behaves worse for point sources than an unaberrated system would. And you see that, in fact, when you get aberrations, the size of this center spot increases, which means you don't have as much resolution of the images. So point spread function can be calculated by most programs. Uh, you can do it long ways by hand, but it's rather tedious. And it gives you a sense of how a perfect point source would be imaged. The more the point spread function spreads out, the worse an optical system can measure a point source, the more aberrations and, and sort of deviation from a good imaging system uh, your system will have.